Polymers are large organic molecules consisting of many repeating units occurring over and over and over again in a long chain. And it's really hard to overstate the importance of polymers in the modern world, both in materials we use in everyday life and in living systems where polymers of carbohydrates and the amino acids really form the basis of some of the key compounds of life. So understanding polymers is really important and the vast majority of important polymers and all important polymers in biochemistry are organic compounds that are formed by organic mechanisms. The industrial production of polymers includes radical polymerization, which is a key way to make polymers that takes advantage of repeated radical reactions. And so what we can do is we can start with an alkene, the simplest alkene being something like ethylene, and treat it with a radical initiator, again keeping it simple, something like a peroxide that generates alkoxy radicals. Those radicals cause repeated radical formation and addition of the newly formed radical to another molecule of the alkene, and this creates a long chain of CH2 groups where each linkage between the ends is created through a radical addition elementary step. So polyethylene, for example, extremely important polymer can be made through radical polymerization like this via repeated radical additions to new ethylene molecules, and we just get a long chain of CH2 groups where each pair of adjacent CH2s comes from an ethylene molecule. Substituted alkenes also react in these polymerization reactions. And vinyl chloride is one important example. And in 2023, vinyl chloride has been in the news in a big way. So this is a good one to look at. These polymerize in what we might call a head-to-tail manner. If you imagine the blue carbon is kind of the head, the one that's connected to Cl, and the red carbon is kind of the tail. Blue links to red and red to blue alternatingly right, in a very consistent way. And so the polymer structure looks like this with a red carbon linked to a blue, red to a blue, blue to a red, red to a blue, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this consistency across the chain, this selectivity, it's a kind of regioselectivity, in fact, that the chlorines are regularly spaced throughout the chain, has to do with radical stability and the stabilization of radical character due to the adjacent CL. By resonance. So without getting in too in the weeds on, on the mechanism here, the growing chain of the polymer has a radical on the end, like this. And to add another equivalent of the monomer, here comes a monomer molecule and we get a radical addition to this pi bond. And the radical addition occurs regioselectively such that radical character ends up adjacent to the chlorine in the new monomer. So we've lengthened the chain by two carbons now, and it's this chlorine on the end, the carbon connected to that end chlorine that has the radical character. And you can imagine this happening just over and over and over again, right? Another molecule of alkene comes along, we get another addition, and so on and so on and so forth. The only thing that's gonna stop this is a termination event something like the coupling of two radicals or abstraction of a hydrogen or something like that, which is going to cause polymerization in a different um, polymer chain. But termination events are what shut these radical polymerizations down. This slide shows the radical polymerization mechanism for ethylene that we touched on in the last slide in all of its detail. It's a chain mechanism. We have initiation where the peroxide homolytically cleaves and then adds to the very first molecule of monomer to create this very first radical. That radical adds another molecule of ethylene. We get another radical and so on and so on and so forth. And this radical addition step is selective for the most stable radical in general. This is why vinyl chloride, for example, polymerizes consistently in this head to tail way, ensuring that the newly generated radical with each addition step is on this blue carbon where it's stabilized by resonance with the adjacent chlorine. And by the way, this is a good exercise in fish hook arrow pushing. Um, try to use fish hook arrows to draw the alternative resonance form here that shows how chlorine is sharing some of the radical character in this um, alpha chloro radical. When steps other than radical addition to the pi bond occur in these radical polymerizations, interesting things happen. For example, the abstraction of a hydrogen inside 
a polymer chain can cause branching since it introduces a radical inside an existing and further polymerized along polymer chain. So if you imagine we've got a long polyethylene chain here with a bunch of CH2s in the middle, if a growing radical uh, comes along, if a growing polymer chain with a radical on the end comes along and abstracts a hydrogen from somewhere in the middle, well that polymer chain is now done reacting, right? It's now a fully even electron stable chain, but I've created a radical internal to an existing polymer chain and that can polymerize and then we get a branch, right? So branching can occur if we get this kind of hydrogen atom abstraction event. And we can actually control the extent of branching by messing with things like concentration and temperature, the amount of initiator, that kind of thing. Termination steps, of course, can also occur, radical-radical couplings, and these will tend to um, shut down polymerization entirely, right? By creating even electron species that can't form radicals and don't have any unpaired electrons around from radical species. So for example, we might have a growing polymer chain. If the concentration of initiator is high, that might run into an alkoxy radical. And when those two couple, I end up with an OR group on the end of the chain, and this is now done polymerizing, right? So I have an OR at the beginning of the chain where polymerization started way, way back over here, and I have an OR on the other end of the chain via a termination event like this. Termination can also occur through the coupling of two radicals on the end of polymer chains. So I might grow out a chain over here, grow out a chain over here, and if they find each other, then that coupling kind of increases the size of the polymer chain dramatically, right, due to that, that coupling, but also shuts down polymerization. Finally, I wanted to touch on the applications of radical halogenation in synthesis and radical reactions in synthesis more broadly. So radical bromination of alkanes is a highly useful reaction for taking a compound that's completely unfunctionalized, an, an alkane. Absolutely nothing interesting from a chemical reactivity point of view in this methyl cyclohexane. However, we can convert it into an alkyl halide through the action of, uh, for instance, Br2 in light or NBS in light, something along those lines. And this alkyl halide is now amenable to substitution or elimination. In this particular case, we could do SN1 substitution here or E1 or E2 elimination to get this alkene or even the Hoffman alkene if we wanted, right? Uh, getting the less substituted double bond is also possible. So radical halogenation is highly useful for this purpose, converting an alkane, maybe that we dug out of the ground with some crude oil into something that we can further functionalize, further modify. Radical hydrobromination of an alkene is complementary to ionic hydrohalogenation in that it's anti-Markovnikov rather than Markovnikov. So this allows the synthesis of relatively unsubstituted, for example, alkyl bromides via a radical mechanism. This is the other place where radical mechanisms are highly useful in synthesis. From a broader point of view, in organic chemistry more broadly, radical addition reactions are highly useful for setting up certain types of functionality that are difficult to do otherwise. If an ionic reaction fails, we can consider a radical alternative. And certain types of atoms, like sulfur, that are pretty good at supporting radicals can be used in radical addition reactions that may be much harder or impossible in an ionic context. So radical additions are often complementary to these ionic alkene additions that we've explored already in the course.